Good evening. Welcome to the semi-final of the World Championship of Cricket, the first semi-final of the competition. This one is between India and New Zealand. Perfect conditions here at the Sydney Cricket Ground today. Not a cloud in the sky and the pitch in good nick and also the outfield which looks to be very fast indeed. There's a Sheffield Shield match played on this ground yesterday and today it's the World Championship of Cricket. So the points tables to show just how the teams got to this stage, India and Pakistan are the semi-finalists in Group A with six points and four points, Australia and England the teams to go out. In Group B, West Indies three and New Zealand three with Sri Lanka no points, just three teams in that division. And uh, the method they used to get to this stage in the semi-final is that India beat Pakistan by six wickets, they beat England by 86 runs and they thrashed Australia by eight wickets. New Zealand beat Sri Lanka by 51 runs and there was a no result for the West Indies when two days allotted to the match were washed out. So the teams for the semi-final today are exactly the same as the last time they put their sides into the field. New Zealand are unchanged and India have their two spin bowlers in the side. They've bowled wonderfully well so far, particularly against England here on this same pitch in an early preliminary match. The toss was won by Sunil Gavaskar. He put New Zealand into bat. We pick up play now in the very first over. Kapil Dev is the bowler to John Wright, the left-hander. No runs on the board. Your commentators, Ian Chappell and Keith Stackpole. An edge there, I would say he's on the way. And Keppel Dev has got an early breakthrough. Vishwanath taking a simple catch behind. And what a good breakthrough for India. It certainly is, Ian. And this has been the tendency right throughout this competition for the Indians to get that early breakthrough. And they'd be certainly relieved to see the back of John Wright, a player who can score very quickly. A faint edge there, straight through to Vishwanath. They could hardly believe their luck picking up a wicket in the very first over. So a terrible start for New Zealand, right out without scoring. Court Vishwanath, bowl Kapil Dev. In the very first over, New Zealand one for none. Roger Binney to McEwen. Just clear Siva Ramakrishnan, who's fielding at point. And an unconvincing two there to Paul McEwen. Four runs coming in that over. New Zealand one for eight after four. Paul McEwen likes to play his shots. And that's very important in these first 15 overs with the field in. Already today, he's shown that inclination to hit the ball. Here it is again, and he's picked the gap this time. Beautiful shot. First boundary of the innings. And Paul McEwen is a lovely timer of the ball. He just wouldn't try and hit the ball on the onside quite so often and uh, play those sort of shots. He could be a very good player. That was perfectly struck through that cover area. Beautiful contact. Right to the pitch of the ball, hit it on the up. And finished it off with good placement. Hardly moved from his crease. And that's a good follow-up there from Roger Binney, and he's got him. Must have been a faint edge. There was a little extra bounce there for Binney. And a very good reply from the Indian opening bowler after being smashed through the covers. Roger Binney at times a little deceptive with his pace and this was a much quicker delivery from him it wasn't pitched up as the previous one was it was a little quicker a little shorter and Vishwanath he loves this Sydney cricket ground five victims last week and already picked up two so that's another good breakthrough for the Indians McEwen out for nine and New Zealand two for 14 New Zealand two for 16 after seven overs Roger Binney is going to continue from the Paddington end to continue in the commentary position. It'll be Frank Tyson and Tony Gregg. Thank you, Ian, and good afternoon, everybody. Beautiful shot. Lovely timing through extra cover. And this outfield looks just a little quicker to me than it's been in recent matches. That one rolling away down to the boundary all the way along the ground. Binney to Crow. Up. 
It's in the air, but it's through the field on the onside. And once again, down towards the deep mid-wicket boundary. Crow off the mark with that boundary. It was played uppishly through the onside. So it's Ke Keppel Dev to the left-handed Reed. A little bit of swing there for him, and Keppel Dev inquiring about that one, but it was very wide. What a good throw. Amanath asking the question too down that other end. Vinny was quick onto that one and a good throw. First wicket falling before a run has been registered. They then put on 14 before McEwen was out. And so things beginning to look up for them now. Two for 32 the score. And that's good running. Shy at the stumps, but he would have been well home. And that's a misfield down that end. They'll get five for this. The shy at the stumps, the backing up wasn't very good. It looked like Mahinda Armanath, who was diving away desperately there to cut off that uh, overthrow from Siva Ramakrishnan. Keppel Dev not very happy at all. New Zealand, two for 37. It's in the air and through the gap on the offside. So Reed beginning to cut loose here a little now. The field a little slow. But that's a bad misfield. Well, it looked as if it hit the rope. I'm not too sure about that. We'll have to have another look at it. But it seemed that they'd made a terrible mess of it. Yes, the four's been signalled down there. A lot of New Zealanders in front of that stand weren't too happy about this. Let's have another look. There's a sporting gesture there by Madden Lal. But it was quite obvious that... There was a great deal of confusion here as the fieldsman approached the boundary, leaving it to one and now Madden Lal slips over. The ball goes beyond Madden Lal, touches the rope. Madden Lal is the bowler, Crow taking strike. And he's gone. Third wicket down. And India struck again. Pace men have done it once more. They ripped through Australia the other day in Melbourne. And Mohammad Azruddin has now caught Martin Crow at slightly backward point. Pace men doing all the damage again. Just what New Zealand didn't need. Martin Crow looking to play the ball away forcefully through the offside, but the ball flying from a thick outside edge to just behind point. And young uh, Mohammed Azruddin takes the catch comfortably. It went straight to him. So New Zealand in the 15th over 3 4 52. After 18 overs. It's three for 62. The medium pace seamers and swingers have taken the wicket so far. Keppel, Dev, Binney and Madden Lal. Getting a wicket each. Madden Lal about to bowl his fifth over. Still Gavaskar has um, five men inside that circle. Only has to have four, but it's five at the moment. Indication he has the feeling that he's on top. Ravi Shastri, the fielder, is one of the two spinners who will come into this attack a little later. So India have got a very nice balance in their team at the moment. The leg buys and health coming back for the second he's in trouble yes he's in big trouble that's a very good throw there Keppel Dev has uh, been excellent in the outfield and that might be one of the reasons he was in trouble I think the strap at the top of his left pad has snapped on the second run and has hampered him on the way through. He's 
off the pad there and just sneaking past the keeper Vishwanath who was annoyed at missing it then Keppel Dev with a magnificent return catches Jeffrey Howth just a fraction out of his crease and a very disappointed New Zealand captain leaves the ground with his pad flapping it's four for 69 3.39 now and Armand Arthur's bowled five overs no wicket for 14 it's hit away on the leg side and uh, into the gap and Reed turns blind look on his back and gets to as Rudine out in the deep good piece of fielding good quick return wasn't quick enough to beat John Reed. It's just a little too high for keeper Vishwanath to drag it down. John Reed doing the right thing, grounding the bat. 3.4 at the moment. Jeremy Coney has the strike. Mahinda Amanath to continue. It's in the air and he's just a little lucky to get away with that. Didn't time it very well, but it's found the gap and it's running away down to the boundary and over the top it goes. Roger Binney not able to drag that one back. And that boundary will bring a little relief to the New Zealanders watching this match. It certainly will. The first boundary from the New Zealanders' bats in 12 overs. That's exactly what they need now. There's plenty of those. Four men inside the circle. Should be close. Oh, if he'd hit there, Coney was gone. <laughs> and Sonny runs up and uh, makes out to knock the bales off with his right hand. Coney is the old English name for a rabbit, and I'm sure that Coney needed to scurry like a rabbit to get in. He wouldn't have made it either had that been a direct hit. And there's the 50 for Reed. So in his. Uh, Three innings so far, 22 not out, a 62 and a 50 not out. Only one boundary has been hit in the last 19 overs. That was hit by uh, Jeremy Coney. It's a good solid shot from John Reid. He certainly looks at home uh, against the spinners. That, of course, is uh, John Reid's great strength. He successfully combated the wiles of Abdul Qadir during the test series in New Zealand recently. And there he is using his feet very nicely to the left armour Ravi Shastri. And that was New Zealand's 25th single in succession. Nice bit of flight there from Shastri. And still, it's just a trickle of singles. Four for 115. And here's a chance for a two. Oh, finally, after all those singles, we've come up with a double. And that was well run by John Reed. Again, hitting the ball not far from one of those deep-set fieldsmen, but running the first one hard and coming home for two. And there's a fieldsman there, Keppel Dev, straight down his throat. So Reed, after having done all the hard work, has holed out. And uh, Keppel Dev, a very, very good outfielder. He's already been involved in one run out and took that catch very safely. With this dismissal, perhaps the consequence of John Reid trying to put the New Zealand innings up a gear, down the wicket, hitting the ball in the air. He doesn't do that very often, but on this occasion, he chose the wrong fieldsman to hit it in the air too. Kapildev takes the catch comfortably. John Reid out for 55, caught Kapildev by Chastri, and in the 35th over with drinks coming onto the field, New Zealand 5 for 119.
Siva Ramakrishnan bowls to Smith. And it's wide of Binney. And a much needed boundary there for New Zealand. Five for 133 after 38 overs. He's Shastri now, left arm round the wicket to Coney. There's a good top spin, a quicker one from Ravi Shastri. None too confidently played, but he'll pick up two runs. And it's five for 139. Five for 142. Coney 33, Smith 12. Partnership of some 24 runs between these two. That, that was certainly worth a good shout, which is what uh, Ravi Shastri gave it. But uh, not worth the overthrow. It was good running between the wickets. It's the first time the Indian fielding has just slackened a little. I don't think that'll go down as one of the better shots of the day or of Jeremy Coney's career. The very last thing in the world they wanted was to lose another wicket there. Coney, 33, bowled by Shastri, the one that came on with the arm. And still nine overs to go. And Jeremy Kearney then clearly indicating his intentions, giving himself a little bit of room outside that off stump and Shastri delivering the arm ball. And New Zealand now with that loss of Kearney for 33, six for 145 with nine overs remaining. Richard Hadley takes strike to Ravi Shastri. Hadley. And that should be out, safely caught, out there at deep mid-off. And Martin Lull has taken the catch. There Richard Hadley has gone, came in late in the order, and has not lasted very long at all. Once again, Ravi Shastri picking up three wickets. One of the features of this competition has been the outfield catching by the Indians. Hardly one has slipped away from them. And Madam Lowell, confident catch again. So Richard Hadley out for three. New Zealand in the 43rd over, seven for 151. Well, six overs to go now. And Madden Lowell, who's bowled five overs, taken one for ten, being brought into the attack. And the New Zealanders going along at 3.62 per over. Cairns has the strike. And he's hit that one down towards square leg very strongly, just over the boundary rope, I think, for six. I think it was fractionally over the rope, or was it? Umpire signalling four, we may have to have another look at that. I think it was the fieldsman down there who perhaps uh, indicated that it bounced just inside the rope. Well, the crowd here at the SCG letting out a loud boo when the umpire signalled. But we can't really tell too much from that, I'm afraid. Kapil Dev to Lance Cairns. That's a full toss and smashed back. Just wide of the bowler. They'll come back for a second. This could be close. <laughs> Big appeal there for the run out, but that's good running by Smith. He went flying down the wicket. And got himself back just in time. Ian Smith very nippy indeed between the wickets. The throw was a good one from Azruddin. Ian Smith very quickly, and that was a very close decision, but uh, the umpire quite right, rightly judging in the batsman's favour. Well, that's played through the gap on the offside. No protection down there, and this may just get to the rope. It will. Roger Vinnie's not very good at dragging those back. A couple of occasions now he's uh, chased it out to the rope and given it away right at the death. Ian Smith still playing a very effective little hand and he'll be in strike now to the next over. Yes, the best thing he can do is get a single, I should think, and that's got to be out very close. Whew. Perhaps it was just missing the leg stump, but it did keep low. Smith tried to pull it away, 
and my initial reaction was that it was plum. Well, it'll be interesting to have another look. Perhaps going down the leg side. He caught a glimpse of Ian Smith's expression. I don't think he could believe that he got away with that either. Mud and lull to Smith. And straight down the ground. This could be out. It will be out. They don't make many mistakes in the outfield. Mahinda Amanas down there, latching onto a pretty straightforward catch. And that's the end of Ian Smith. Out caught in the deep for 19. Well, Ian Smith trying to emulate Lance Cairns and keep the runs coming. Dancing down the wicket. Didn't hit the ball particularly well. Up in the air and down the throat of Jimmy Amanath at uh, deep mid-off. Ian Smith departs. And New Zealand with just over two overs to go. Eight for 188. Well, that'll be four. There's no one down at fine leg. That's not very good bowling by Kapildev. They've left that area vacant. And anything in that, uh, on that leg stump that's played away fine is going to go to the boundary. Madden Lowell bowling to Cairns. Can we have a big one to finish with? He's going for it. It's high and it's miles in the air. There's someone underneath it. It's gone up miles. He's dropped it. Well, I think it was three cans down there. But that was miles in the air, and they are loving it. I don't think I've seen many go higher than that. Well, he'll go again, that's for sure. There he goes, and it's three cans again. He can't have two in a row. He doesn't want it. <laughs> that bounce is just short of the rope. It's gone for four. Well, I think that one really went as high as it went far as well. I'll tell you what, three cans didn't want to know. No way, and uh, Sonny Gavaskar not very happy with the performance of his outfielders during those two deliveries, urging his men on. Three cans been taken around down to square leg. Two balls, or is it Kepeldev? Kepeldev been moved down to that uh, deep mid-wicket position. Oh, Shri Kant's under the again. He's got him this time. <laughs> well, Sonny Gavaskar's moved him away. Out of the danger area, and what happened? Cairns hit it straight to him this time. He made no mistake. We'll have a look at Gavaskar. <laughs> and the Indians are really very happy. Well, Lance Cairns was trying to hit it over the top of all those fields, but he's tried to do it on two previous occasions in this over. He's never really middled any of these shots. And Shrikant down there at backward square leg. Heaves a monstrous sigh of relief as he takes the catch and Lance Cairns out for 39 off 29 balls. What a most effective innings. Martin Sneddon taking strike to Mudden Lull. Well, he's hit it and it's going down the ground. Will this be out? Ezra Dean's there. He's caught it. New Zealand all out of the last ball of their innings. 206 posted by them. And that's not a bad recovery after a dreadful start. Well, that was a great recovery from uh, New Zealand. Tremendous performance at one stage. It seemed to me they were going to be bowled out for something around about 170 or 180 to get up to four runs and over as uh, the target. And a very fine performance indeed. 206 they made. I was most impressed with John Reed, the left-hander, 55 and 101 balls. Jeremy Coney played well as he generally does. He's a very dependable cricketer. And Lance Cairns, a happy-go-lucky cricketer. He takes his batting very seriously these days. 39 in 29 balls. Who wouldn't take it seriously? if uh, they can come up with that. 206 then all out in 50 overs exactly and the bowling figures for India again most impressive. Their fielding was good, there was the one catch put down by Srikanth. Kapil Dev won for 34, Bini won for 28, Madan Lal 4 for 37, Amanath none for 24, Siva Ramakrishnan none for 31 and Ravi Shastri again bowled quite beautifully there with his left arm around the wicket spin. Three for 31. So India need 4.14 per over to win the semi-final. It should be a very, very good contest, but it won't be all that easy for them. 
No wicket for four from three overs, and that's in reply to New Zealand's score. Oh, and that's a good delivery from Hadley. Angled in and then just moving away through the air. A maiden, it's none for four. This is Lance Cairns. Nicely timed. Just two runs. This will be the most testing time these openers have had in this World Championship of Cricket. Richard Hadley to Shastri. Paul McEwen is fairly square, and Shastri has guided that one down to a fine third man for the first boundary of the innings. Very frustrating for New Zealand, but Indian supporters will be delighted about that. Quite a chase there for Martin Sneddon. Srikanth is very quick between wickets. And he comes back for the third. Chatfield to Srikanth. That's a more typical shot from Srikanth. Quite a chase for Lance Cairns. And India once again making a good start. They post 124 against Australia. They're on the way again. And uh, Srikanth has now made his 1,000th run in limited overs internationals. Uh, John Reed getting underneath it and that ball not bouncing anywhere near as high as what Strickant thought it was going to and Ewan Chatfield has struck the first blow for New Zealand and I think that feeling I had was quite right he went for that tried to pull it and as Ian Chapel has underlined it didn't bounce all that high and in the end I think he tried to check his stroke Kanth caught by Reed from the bowling of Chatfield for nine. India one for 28 in the ninth over. And after 10 overs, New Zealand were two for 37. Went on to get 206. India a little behind as far as runs are concerned. Deficit of nine. They've got an extra wicket up their sleeve. Beautifully played through the gap on the onside. Very characteristic of a lot of these Indian batsmen. Very whippy with the wrists. Seems to me that Martin Sneddon has slowed down a bit. He's not trying to bowl as fast as last time we saw him. Concentrating more on length and moving the ball. As Rudin was after him, but uh, Sneddon dropped it short on him. And another round of applause here. The crowd is getting very involved here. They can sense that this is a tremendous effort being put up by the New Zealanders. They're defending a small total. Just 206. Well bowled and well fielded. Good cricket from Martin Sneddon and a roar of applause from this SCG crowd. One for 46 in 20 overs. Penny to Azruddin. Now there's four and that is the position that's been left open to try and buy the wicket. It was a real cross batter. 
And the Indian supporters rise to their feet to greet. The first bright moment in 14 overs. The first time that the ball has reached the boundary fence. It's a fairly agricultural looking stroke on the part of Azruddin. It's a fairly crucial time for Indian hopes. They must get Coney away for runs. Beautifully played. Perfect placing just inside at mid-off and just away to the left of the man at uh, long on. Well, so far, so good. The question one asks oneself is, can this go on? I think the Indian batsman, as Rudin and uh, Shastri, realise they must get after Coney. Chatfield now to Azruddin. The shot of the evening so far. And suddenly the run rate jumps. Oh, this young man from Hyderabad. When he plays a shot like that, he doesn't look like the bank officer he is. Rudin has taken strike and it's in the air it should be caught it's John Reed oh what a catch Coney it was came around with Reed racing towards it that is a marvelous catch Mohammed Azruddin has gone Reed was racing in from long on Coney took it on himself to run away from the bowler and the batsman and he took a superb catch over his shoulder Oh yes, that's a catch that's going to lift that New Zealand side because Azruddin hit that fairly well in the meet. It went very, very high, was going away from Coney as he chased after it. But it was a case of now you see it, now you don't. And I think that Jeremy Coney didn't see it for most of the way. He had his eyes upwards. Oh my word, how well he judged it. A superb catch. And that was John Reed came into picture just a few yards away from Coney. Azruddin out for 24, 2 for 73. You mentioned that uh, Ravi Shastri hit six sixes and one over. And you don't know who the bowler was, uh, do you? I certainly don't think he's become as famous as Malcolm Nash has anyway. He was the guy that Garfield Sobers hit the six sixes off in 1968. That's nicely placed. And Sakra will get back for the second. It's important to, to pick up the twos as well. It's 2 for 86. But, uh, Ravi Shastri is playing it pretty intelligently out there. He posed a hypothetical question before as to whether or not the bowler who delivered the over in which Shastri hit six sixes would become as well known as Malcolm Nash, the bowler who had six sixes hit off him by Garfield Sobers back in 1968. We've been informed by our statistician Irving Rosenwater. The bowler's name was Tacky Raj. And there's 50 to Ravi Shastri. And I think that's very tacky of you, Peter, to mention the guy's name. Well played, Ravi Shastri. That's his second consecutive half century in this World Championship Series. So Richard Hadley, who has not taken a wicket tonight, but he's bowled quite magnificently, particularly against uh, Shrikanth when he had up in all sorts of strife outside the off stump. No wicket for 11 off five. Hadley about to start his sixth over. Once again, the responsibility of securing a breakthrough for New Zealand rests on the shoulders of this great all-rounder. And taken at point, he's broken through immediately. And Ravi Shastri, the man that uh, they wanted, comfortably caught at point by Paul McEwen. So in the 32nd over, Hadley has stung like a bee. 
Just what the doctor ordered as far as New Zealand was concerned. Ravi Shastri, the bat a long way from his body and the ball just spooned to Paul McEwen and Hadley applauds his Canterbury teammate because the third Indian wicket has fallen and the score is 3 for 102 in the 32nd over. Hadley to Kapil Dev. And that's nicely placed, beating Chatfield at third man. That pad has been brought in to put some extra pressure on Kepel Dev. Chatfield to Kepel Dev. It's in the air over point. Won't go for four. It was miscued, meant to be hit down the ground. But they'll get three. This is the danger time, as far as New Zealand are concerned. This man, Kapil Dev, has already gone past double figures. 3 4 one, one, eight. Hadley, got into Vensaka. Slashed away for four. Uh, Hadley at the start gave these fellows absolutely no room at all. Couple dev, the man taking strike, gave him no room at all in the early overs. Uh, there's a bit of room there outside the off stump and short. Brilliant stroke again. Hadley's too short and too wide. Well, the Indians are dancing in the aisles. They're loving every in, every second of this Kapil Dev, of course, a big hero in India. Oh no! Now that could be the match. John Reed at mid-off, beautifully bowled by Hadley, the slow ball. Everything went right, except that it came out of Reed's hands. Yes, it is hit quite firmly, but it was straight to him, and it's the sort of catch that any test player should take. Shot. Now that's adding a little bit of insult to a lot of injury. Oh, this is magnificent cricket. Kapil Dev at his very, very best. Hadley to Vensaka. Uh, it's a very, very expensive over for Hadley and for New Zealand. India have raced along now to three for 135. Sneddon to Vensaka. Four runs, only just out of the reach of the close infielder there. But beautifully struck by Kapildev. By uh, Dilip Vinsaka. Yes, Vinsaka now beginning to unleash a few beautiful drives. Lovely uh, cover drive there. Three for 166. 38 Kapil Dev, 39 Vinsaka. Vinsaka has strike. There's a beautiful stroke for three. In the air, but safe, and three more. This time, Kapil Dev. Great stroke. Beautiful cricket from India here. Tied down just after the start of their innings by some brilliant New Zealand work. They've fought back and now they're carving the attack.
And safely away through slip. Chatfield can't get it for more. And the score's fairly racing along now. And Saka has gone past the half-century mark. Hadley back into the attack. He's had his first three overs, all maidens. And Srikanth all at sea against him. And Keppel's caught hold of that one. He just one bounce and over the rope. And I don't think he hit it in the middle. But it's still almost carried to the longest boundary on the ground. There's the slower ball. He hasn't quite got that one in the middle. And it will pitch just like a wedge shot going into the green. And that's the 50 for Keppel Dev and the 200 coming up for India. And uh, we could be well on the way to a replay of the 1983 World Cup final. Keppel Dev uh, strikes the winning blow. It'll just be a single. Ball will stop short of the boundary. And so India claim victory in the 44th over. And they go through to the final. And the Indians are really on the warpath. Well, that was a great performance from the Indians. They played it just right. They started off quite well and then were bogged down against some magnificent New Zealand bowling and captaincy. Thought Howard did a great job out there. And then, after they'd been tied down in such splendid fashion by the Kiwis, they came back through Vensaka and Kapil Dev and just smashed the attack all round the ground. The final score of 3 for 207, Shastri 53, Azruddin 24, Vensaka 63 not out from 59 balls, and Kapil Dev 54 from 37. The bowling figures, Cairns one wicket, Hadley one, and Chatfield won, and a terrific performance from the Indians to come back like that. And now they've won four out of four. Must be a very happy man, I should think, Sunu Gavaskar, as he talks now with Tony Green. Thank you, Richie. The Victorian Cricket Association allocated $10,000 for this match. $6,000 goes to the winning captain, and that, of course, is out of their Benson Hedges kitty, and uh, the very happy Sunny Gavaskar. Congratulations. What a great win. Yes, indeed. I think uh, at one stage it looked a bit difficult, but... Uh, I think uh, Kapil and uh, Dilip played uh, a most sensible game and uh, they turned the game inside out really for us. Around right about 17 overs there, um, 17 through about 22 when uh, Mohammed Azradeen was out there. That's when it looked a bit dicey for you. Yes, that's right. But, you know, we always knew we had Kapil and, you know, Kapil's a kind of cricketer. We've, I've always been saying he can turn the match inside out. That's exactly what he's done. Dilip played um, with, uh, you know, with sense, common sense. And there you are. Can you beat this West Indians? Well, just let me say that, you know, our wishes at the moment are with our uh, neighbouring uh, brothers, Pakistan, for the game tomorrow. So you hope they win and you'll get them <laughs> in the final. right? Yeah. well, we know your tactics. Well done today. Thanks a lot. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Okay. Right, well, Ravi Shastri was the player of the match. $1,000 for him. And uh, this magnificent uh, couple of Benson Hedges gold goblets. Congratulations, Ravi. You're making a habit of this. You better not forget the check. No, you're enjoying it. Audio, you're, you're watching the audio, are you? <laughs> no, not really. Well, you reckon you get spare parts of that in India? Uh, in <laughs> India, you get anything. You've got to pay the price for it. You enjoying your trip? Oh, yeah, very much. And uh, you reckon you can clean those West Indians up down in Melbourne on Sunday? Oh, that's hard, but then you play it as it comes. Hope for the best. Congratulations today. Thank you. Thanks again. What a great effort from Ravi Shastri, player of the match here at the SCG and player of the match in the last game in which India took part. We know now that Suno Gavaskar's side have gone through to the final. We look forward to having you with us for the next match for the moment. It's good night.